All right, this week's Eye on MPI is from Ablick. What do they make? What do they do? What's a new product? I'm glad it's, I've never, I think this is our first time uh, showing an, an Ablick or a, a Stay tuned, they got a, cool, they got a cool video. The video's pretty you're cool. You're gonna like this. Um, so this is a Japanese IC company. They make a lot of timer chips, low cost chips, um, RTCs, automotive stuff. Uh, we've never highlighted their stuff before, but I'm excited uh, to show off something which I was actually looking for anyways uh, when I searched on digikey.com slash new. Um, somebody that asked for a chip like this um, and th- this popped up and I was like, oh my goodness, it's what a good coincidence. I'm gonna show it off. So this is the S, sorry, S35, 7, 10, uh, and 20 series of um, ultra low power timer chips. Um, these are very interesting ICs that are designed uh, specifically to uh, be programmable with different wake up times. Um, and they use an extraordinarily low amount of current, uh, up as low as 0.2 microamps or 0.5 microamps of current. Um, the one in particular I'm looking at is the uh, 35710 series, which is the, the amount of time it goes to sleep for before it wakes up. Um, is programmable over I squared C, which means that you can really set um, a very wide range of, of times from like one second to almost half a year. Uh, compare that to, you know, what we've used before like the TPL 511 and uh, 5110 series, um, which you have to use a resistor and it's a little tougher to use. Um, this timer I see looks very simple and I like that, of course, it's uh, fully programmable over I squared C. Uh, okay, and it has a wide, uh, voltage range. Uh, So basically, um, what this is useful for is, you know, if you have, um, you know, microcontroller boards, like, you know, the original Arduino Uno, um, or or other boards that were designed um, early, or they're not designed for low power, um, because they're using, say, uh, you know, 7805 regulator, and just the quiescent current on the regulator, not even including any of the other LEDs or buttons or chips or whatever is already, you know, six plus milliamps, Um, you know, and you want to use this, you have your design and you want to turn it into a low power design, you may not be able to without like hot airing or desoldering components and replacing them. It might be actually harder um, than just adding a separate circuit to to do the low power part. And um, also, you know, specific, you know, historically with especially maker and dev boards, they weren't really designed to be used in final products or projects. They were kind of meant for prototyping, and then you'd go and design your own custom board. And you, you know, if low power was important to you, you would um, pick the more expensive components as necessary. Um, but we're, what we're seeing is a lot of people are using off-the-shelf boards. Like, uh, you know, let's say you're using um, one of our Feather ESP32s, even though the ESP32. Um, V2 Feather here, you know, and that this chip, the ESP32, is a low power chip. It can go down um, as little as, you know, 170 microamperes. Um, but you might want something lower power than that. You know, maybe you do want to get down to that one microampere or less. Or let's say you're using a dev board that's low cost and available, like the Pico W. Um, well, the RP2040 is, um, you know, even in, in uh, dormant or sleep mode, it uses, you know, um, let's see, the typical current there is about 0.2 milliamps, which again is, is a lot higher than a few microamps. And, you know, it, historically, again, this didn't matter as much. A lot of people were just happy to power something over USB or DC power. But then as people are doing more IoT projects or sensor nodes, there is this desire to, you know, sleep for a few minutes, wake up, take a temperature me- measurement or, or look for a command. Um, send the data over cellular or Wi-Fi and then go back to sleep. Um, so, you know, this, this circuit, you know, this, this diagram shows specifically for this Ablick IC, but the overall idea is, is pretty common. And we see this with, especially the ESP32 S, um, sorry, the ESP32 series, where you go into deep sleep for a few minutes, then wake up, uh, fetch data, see if something's changed, um, you know, activate a, a sensor or, um, a servo or a motor or whatever, uh, but you're not constantly checking, you're, you're, you're taking advantage of being in this ultra deep sleep mode. Um, so that's where this chip comes in. So this, this timer series I see, you know, instead of having your regulator and your microcontroller manage your deep sleep mode and then automatically wake up and you have like, a, you know, this core that could be taking, I mean, this is a low 
this example here shows a one microampere, uh, you know, an STM32 or whatever, but even one microampere is extremely low for most microcontrollers. It's, it's often tough to get less than, um, with a regulator especially, less than like 50 or, or even 10 microamperes. Um, but with this chip, you know, you might be able to get under, um, you know, 0.3 microamperes total. And, you know, in this case, I even show with an LDO, um, but because this chip runs from two to five volts, you might not even need an LDO. I think if you're running off of a LiPo battery or a couple double A's, um, you can have the timer IC run directly from uh, your battery power, um, you know, basically having almost no current. And if your sleep times are very, very long, if they're, you know, minutes or, or days or hours, um, this will let you run off a battery even longer than, uh, you know, maybe five times as long as you would by using the built-in microcontroller's deep sleep. Uh, so this is the block diagram. So how it works is you, you do have to get a crystal, um, a 32 kilohertz crystal connected to the X in and X out. You power it with VDD and VSS. Um, there is the I2C connection, and again, that's how you tell it how long you want the delay to be. Um, when you toggle the reset pin, it will start from zero, start counting up one per second. It has a 24-bit timer. Um, when it when the timer matches the counter that you set, um, the int pin goes low, and that would enable your regulator or fire an interrupt or reset something, whatever necessary. And then um, your microcontroller would do whatever it needs to, and then when it's ready, it would um, toggle that reset pin low, and when the reset pin goes low, uh, int will go back high, it'll shut down the rest of the circuit uh, and start counting again. So, you know, you... you you know, you basically, you trigger that interrupt pin on um, the, the set timeout, and then you wait for the microcontroller to tell the chip, okay, I'm done computing whatever tasks. Um, I'm going to go, you know, put me back to sleep and wake me up in, you know, whatever, 60 seconds or five days. Uh, there's also a version of this chip uh, that comes with a crystal built in. So there's two um, two packages. There's like the MSOP package, which is low cost, it's about a dollar, and then there's the version with the crystal. It's a little bit more expensive because it's got a crystal bonded in. Um, but you know, you might want that for convenience, so you don't have to wire up a separate crystal. Um, otherwise, the circuitry inside is otherwise identical, other than the the crystal. Uh, this just shows the block diagram for the version, uh, the M series version. Again, with crystal built in, you can see the quartz crystal is just bonded in the package. Otherwise, though, it functions the same. Um, there's also another version of the circuit. So the I squared C version of this chip, again, you have a 24 bit counter to the 24 seconds is 194 days. So you just tell how many seconds you want it to be in this ultra deep sleep. There's also the, uh, 35, 720, um, which has two, instead of I squared C, it has two GPIO and you can just like, you can, um, patch those high or low. You see on the bottom right there for one 10, 30 or 60 second delays. So if you, if you don't need very long delays, if one of those times is, is those amount of times is good enough for you, um, you don't have to do the I squared C stuff. Uh, it'll just automatically do it um, based on whatever the pins are strapped to. Um, as mentioned, uh, the current consumption is ultra, ultra low, uh, you know, because there's no microcontroller core, it's just like a counter basically. Uh, it gets down to as low as uh, 0.2 uh, microamperes, um, you know, if using a uh, six picofarad load capacitor, you know, max is maybe 0.5 microamperes. So, so ultra, ultra low consumption, um, nothing's going to beat it. And if you're tired of trying to optimize the rest of your circuit, you can throw this in for, or you're using modules that you can't change the regulators, you can't change the chips, or maybe the chip you want is unavailable because of chip shortage, toss this in and it'll solve your low power problem. Um, for I2C, it's pretty simple. There's basically, you can uh, read the time register against this counter that, that counts up over time. And then you've got a matching wake up time register that you write. Um, when those match up, the reset occurs. So I like the I2C version. You know, I'll probably just make a breakout with an external crystal, um, but very promising. You know, I love the, the TPL series. A lot of times people are like, I wanna make something low power and I'm, and I'm struggling, I'm struggling. And I'm just like, you know what? Just, just add an external timer chip, and it'll do everything for you. Available on DigiKey, and uh, it's in stock. And that's right. You can actually get it. And that's that's one of the challenges with Ion MPI. We want to make sure if we're going to uh, get excited, 
Get you excited. Get everyone excited to use some of these things in your projects that it's available. And a uh, special treat, they have a really cool video, so we're just going to play it. I see. 